And what we're gonna do, okay, I got great spark, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the other side of the bike. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. Enjoy the video. Hey friends, Shane from howtowrench.com and I'm getting uh, to another step in my progress of working on this VFR. Yes, I turned the lights off on purpose. It'll make sense in a second here. But when I get this far along, I am always hitting these stop points to check things that, like if they're wrong, I want to fix them now, right? So I've done compression, leak down, all that's good, checking for leaks, things like that. And before I put the carburetors on and fill up this whole cavity, and before I put the radiator and make it really hard to get to these plugs, check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn one more light off. I'm going to make it dark. And what we are going to do is we're going to check for spark on all four cylinders. Before I turn this light off, what the reason I do it in the dark, learned this years ago by accident and working in a shop that didn't have a lot of light and we were doing a spark check and we could see the spark plug wires lighting up like fireworks. It was crazy. We we're like, dang, what a neat diagnostic tool. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm hoping everything's going to be fine, but I'm going to go ahead and kill this light, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to not only check spark, like I said, but we are going to be looking. There's, let's see, where's my coil? Coil's right here, okay? And what we're going to do... Okay, I got great spark, but I'm going to I'm gonna go the other side of the bike because this is a real test. I mean, this is a real customer's bike. And what I'm going to do is... The ignition coil runs along the back side here. Ready? Can you see my spark? Okay, there's my spark. Yeah, I'm following the coil wire back and I am not seeing any problems. Let me turn the lights back on and summarize here. Pretty uh, cool idea, huh? Yeah. One second. Wow, the things that we do to buy a little bit of insurance, that's what we're doing here. You know, you could call this your state farm plan, your farmers, whoever your favorite insurance is, and, you know, do these intermittent checks. So if you want kind of a summary real quick, if you haven't been watching the other videos, I'm always doing compression like before and after, right? You know, before, okay, there's a problem, let's fix it. Let's do it after, make sure the problem went away. Leak down, make sure there's no issues or anything going around after work that you've done. Do a cylinder leak down test and a coolant pressure test. I've got it out waiting right here. Once I put the radiator back on, I'm going to do a cooling system pressure test. Before all this body work goes on, before everything's buttoned up, these are great times to take advantage of this. So like in the case of these ignition coils, you can see... They're buried back down in here. If I got the gas tank and everything on here and then found out, oh, something's not right or it's not running well, oh, well, maybe we go to spark problem. I'm doing a ton of reverse work. So I'm doing that spark check, like I said, right now on all of them. You can see in the front here, once I put that radiator on there, that is a knuckle busting. Matter of fact, in the manual, they have you loosen the mounts and tip it forward to get a little access in there. But man, that is a knuckle buster to try and do that later on. The other thing that I'm doing, there's something important here, and the people that skip this part of the video, they're missing out. You're not because you're here. The other thing that I'm doing that is super, super crucial is I have all the spark plugs in, okay? I have all four plugs in. This is a dummy plug, or it's one of the old plugs. So why is that important? Well, what I'm doing is I'm checking all these ignition coils' ability to fire under that that compression load, if you will, of the of the motor, right? If you have it with no plugs in it and it'll whirl to the moon really nice and easy, that, that means that the rotor that's spinning around there is gonna be it's gonna spin faster. When things spin faster, they have more power, right? They have you build a bigger electrical field, so you're gonna have bigger, brighter sparks. So by me doing this under compression, what that does is it slows that down a little bit and, and loads the system, if you will, so like it would work, you know, in the real world, right? Obviously, I want to check and see if I have a really good blue spark there under compression. Now, if I want to take that step further, if you haven't seen our other videos, I'd have to start digging out my diagnostic tools, but we have testers where we can actually check 
the secondary output with everything attached so that we're also having that compression go against the spark plug. Let me explain that a little bit more while we're in this video. When you fire a cylinder, that compression's coming up, that piston's coming up, and what happens is that electrical has to jump that gap, okay? So it's got to jump from the center of that spark plug, because that's where we're feeding it from the ECM, and it has to find its ground. It, it has to be stronger than and jump across to this ground strap that's to the plug body and grounds to the motor. That's, that's what completes the path. But if you've never really thought about it, you have like 70,000 pounds of combustion pressure pushing up against that, that ignition system's really got to work hard to overcome that cylinder pressure to jump across there. So there's a lot of science there. There's a lot of engineering that goes into all this. But my friends, that is another little bit of insurance that you can buy yourself before you button it up so that you don't end up having to find things out the hard way. A couple other things. Talk about a little bit of safety here. This bike has a fuel pump, and if you'll notice, I have the fuel pump disconnected, so I have no fuel sources anywhere around that's going to get me any trouble and, and cause problems, right? So the moment I get this done, intakes are going to get covered back up so I can kind of keep working on things and not take any risk of things falling in there. There's a lot to being a technician. If you're doing this yourself and you're thinking, man, to heck with this, I'm going to pay somebody. Now you know why. You got to pay them what you got to pay them. There is a lot to know to do it right. And there's a lot of things not to know to get into trouble. So my friends, I'm going to get back at it. I hope you appreciated this little bit deeper dive for you on a really rad test. I bet you haven't seen before because I haven't seen it. I don't see anybody making this one. I think it's really cool. And I'll never forget that it was not my idea. It was a student's idea way back in the day. Ross was his name. I don't know if it's Ross's idea as much as we all like discovered it together, right? But I know it was Ross's motorcycle, his little VT, I think 600 or VT 750, one or the other. And we were just like, whoa, 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 what, what? Look at that, look at that, look at that. And we see, you know, just the, the spark plug wire shooting like fireworks. And it got pretty scary for the student and maybe some other students in that class because they were thinking, man, if I was riding down the motorcycle and I had a crappy fuel line or I had a tiny little carb leak or I had a you know fuel injector leak anything and it's dripping down on wires motorcycles are very compact right imagine the fire that would come from that so if you're ever wondering how some of these motorcycles you know you see them at rallies and different stuff where they're catching on fire that's one of the ways it can happen would be a bad plug wire so way cool right all right make sure like share subscribe smash those share buttons Get this message out to the world. If you haven't done so, head over to our new YouTube channel, Tools to Wrench. As always, I'm going to get back at it, make it a great day, and keep wrenching. Hey, friends. We're super excited to announce that the How to Wrench channel has been approved for memberships. What's that mean for you? What would it look like if you could get member-only content? Many of you have been asking over the last year as we've put out surveys and, and tried to get some feedback that you missed the old deep dive long videos playing content. Those are very hard to produce and they're very costly. They take an immense amount of time, especially to make it uh, creative and interactive for you to get that deep understanding. We have a lot of schools, institutions, do-it-yourselfers. I mean, really people from all over the world in over 200 countries are using our content to get a deep understanding to help themselves or to advance in their career. Well, those videos are coming back. That's the kind of content that's going to go in this membership channel because we can offset some of those costs. So that's one, you're going to get the deep dive videos. Two, you're going to get access to member only streams and live chats to where you can actually call in, ask questions and get answers on the spot and have a, a back and forth Q&A session with other members as well. We're super excited about that. And with the member channel, it's going to really make it more intimate. We're going to be able to bring that back into more of a community instead of all the yahoos out there that are just causing trouble and being idiots. This community has always been about helping each other, getting those answers to the questions we need. You got to remember, I love YouTube too. When I want to learn something, it's quite often one of my first go-to places to get information or to learn something that I'm trying to do. So we love that we can do this for you as well, and we just want to make this 
of a community that is more attentive. So we want to be more relationship focused. The other thing is YouTube does this. I think it's kind of funny, but we're doing the emojis. So if you're a new member, it's going to be a green one. We kind of went along the lines of like a training does in most uh, certification programs. Bronze is your entry level, a silver is your middle of the road, and then gold is your, you know, top certified. But we added one more. We added a red one just to say, hey, thanks for all the love after you've been here for a while. So for all you that love that kind of stuff, hey, it's there for you. Um, what else are you going to get with this? What you're going to get is really honestly, in, in my opinion, it's really a way just to say thank you. We've tried really hard over the years to figure out creative ways to not beg, if you will, but to try and encourage and remind people that, hey, I, I got a full-time job. Like I do this and have always done this on my own buck. All these expenses are my own. As I move to this new location, Phoenix, it's really expensive. It costs a lot to be able to do all this, and we really do need your help to offset some of that. So this is a way for you to really easily just say thank you and create that, you know, like I said, that deeper relationship with us as well to get the answers that you want and you need. So with that being said, I hope this has caught your attention. Look at the options below on the join. You hit that join button. It'll tell you what tiers. You can figure out what works best for you. We're already going to start moving forward making content that's member only. So I hope that you're working on something that's making you smile or that you're getting through it or that's making you money. So we're going to get back at it. Make it a great day and keep wrenching.